Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I was already out here today and I was messing around a little bit. Huge shout out to Ben. He had some calipers that I could take apart and, and uh, have powder coated. So I'm gonna get these redone in this color red just so it looks factory again, because I mean, that's all I'm really looking for. This black does look really good, but I kind of want to stick to this red because the rear ones are red and I want to do the control arms in red as well. So we're just gonna stay there. I did get the fittings from Summit. They did show up. I ordered them, I think I ordered them like Wednesday morning at like two o'clock and they showed up this morning. Less than 36 hours, guys. It's crazy, and I had these fittings. So I got some 7 16ths and 3 8 in case, so I could decide which way I want to go. I'm probably just going to use these so it's one fitting. Right out of the proportion and valve and into the line kind of gets rid of the adapter. And then I also bought some 3 16ths uh, female fittings that I could use at the back. That way I can just use a normal 3 8 flare nut, and I'm not worried about doing one big one and one small one using the factory rear fittings because they are different. And you can see that in this car here. So this one is a 7 16ths dash 24 thread and this one is a 3 8 dash 24 thread so you need the adapter to fit the factory um, non abs proportion and valve with one line and then the other one from the srt4 just kind of threads right in and no problem and then the same thing with the front lines one of them needs the adapter and one of them doesn't because of the fittings that they come with so it is what it is on that stuff uh no big deal like i said I, i'm just gonna use this adapter here i have 3 8 flare nuts for quarter inch line so i'm just gonna uh, flare the back lines with the 3 8 nuts use these fittings here so it gets rid of an adapter at this point on one line and not needing one on the other because both of these are 7 16 and like i said one fitting is and one isn't and i'm not going to deal with trying to find a 7 16 quarter inch flare nut i'm just going to go to the 3 8 fitting flare the lines at the back and we're going to call it good but like i said i did buy the 3 8 adapters because i was on the fence to see if i wanted to do these coming out of an adapter at the master or not but i decided not to but in that same order i got the fittings i need to make the fuel line for a rice car here as well so i got the russell fitting that'll pop onto there i got the fitting that'll pop onto the fuel line or that'll pop onto the fuel rail and then when i was digging around if i could find it oh yeah and then when i was digging around i found this line it was already done so i can use this one to come out of the regulator and go into the rail and that should have the right amount of line to set that up and I also dug out a piece of line that I can use to make what I need to make what I need for this piece here so the only fitting I needed was the 90 because I have a straight in the bin on the wall over there um, so we're doing the 90 out of the regulator and then I'm going to do a straight push push lock fitting into the um, female push to connect here and that'll take care of the underhood fuel line so we got all the parts I need for that like I said I did get those calipers from Ben so we're at least getting the calipers done for this car at the same time so now what I got to do at least tonight is get the calipers ground down that are going to fit the 13s on this car and then i can get those pistons popped out pull the seals pull the bleeder and then take those in and get those powder coated as well so i got to get this stuff done we're meeting rick in the morning to pick up the spindles for this car and then we're going to drop all these other parts off for powder for, for powder work and then in the meantime tomorrow before i start working on the white car here what i'm probably going to do is run over to the pole barn and see about getting the uh, spindle and everything put together for this car that way I can get the suspension mounted and start getting a bunch of other stuff stuffed in the car. I can always hang the calipers later on, that's no problem, but at least at that point when I stuff the motor and transmission in, then I'm ready to pop the axles in and keep everything clean in the trans. We're close to firing this car. So tonight, like I said, what we're going to try and do is I'm going to at least get the calipers done. Once the front calipers are ready, which I have them set out, there's one over here and then the other one for this side. So once those are ground down and everything fits good and I got enough room that he can lay a little bit of powder on, I can go ahead and get them popped apart and we'll get those ready to go. We'll get all the parts set at the back. And then what I'm going to try and do is probably get the cluster mounted. I have a dash outside. It's kind of just sitting in the weeds, but I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to cut the plastic out of it that I need to try and mount the cluster. That way I can get everything powered up, see if I can have a surface to mount the gauges to around the cluster. And then uh, that'll determine the next step of what I'm going to do with the gauges. So I at least want to have the cluster plugged in. And then I'm going to hook up the oil pressure and fuel pressure gauges. So we're going to try and get that that stuff sorted out once the calipers are ready to go. So it's kind of nice that I'm getting all the parts ready to go with the blue one here. That way when I'm either waiting for an appointment to get a roll cage or an appointment for a dyno or we're waiting on good weather to try and drive the car to get the braking miles in, you know, if we get like a rainy day or something, then I'll be able to at least start pushing on the blue one here. My buddy Matt from Origins reached out and he wants to give me a hand with painting the engine bay on the blue car here. So I'm going to order some paint. And then when that comes in, I'll have all the parts tore off probably by the time he gets here. We'll get it scuffed down, get everything prepped, and then um, we'll shoot some nice pretty blue back on it. That way the engine bay looks clean again. We'll get the core support, and then uh, 
we'll start putting everything back together. Before I put water in the car, what I had to do was uh, at least get the overflow mounted. That way, when I put water in here, there is a little uh, nipple that comes off. So it does seal around here, but I at least wanted to get this in. That way, you know, when I do take this off, when water runs in, it doesn't just run down and get in the timing cover. And then I ain't got a problem with that stuff. So I wanted to at least get this in. Huge shout to Javier at Craze Motorsports. Uh, I did win this while we were at the SRT4 Showdown. It is one of his overflow cans. So we got that guy mounted. We're ready to ride with that. So this guy can sit here and kind of just bleed itself out while we get these brakes ground down. Well guys, took me a lot longer to get those calipers ground down than I expected. Uh, I tried to fit the yellow ones and the bodies on them were so thick that the wheel didn't even want to slip on over top of the, of the caliper itself. Uh, and I'll show you why. You can see right here all the rub marks, but there's a step in the wheel. It's probably a half of an inch, I guess, that comes up right here. Well, when it drops right here, it's fine, but right here it rubbed and you can see where it got the wheel. So what I had to do is grind the absolute piss out of that caliper. And, I'm, and it bugs the hell out of me to have to do this. But I had to grind into that bracket that I just had powder coated. And I still gotta take more off. So I gotta take I gotta take meat off here, take meat off here. And do the same thing on the other side. So, I mean it sucks, but I guess it is what it is. I'll just grind it down and shoot some high temp black over it or something. Hopefully it holds, but I got uh, front calipers and brackets for blue car ready to go. Got the front calipers for this car ready to go. Got the rear control arms for blue car ready to go. Uh, these are the ones that we, nope, nope, what is that one? Oh no, that is the stock one. Must be this one. Yeah. Ground the absolute shit out of it. I had to take a lot of meat off. But it happens. Did what you gotta do to clear the wheels. So, as long as we can run the setup I want, I'm okay with it. I guess in the end, if I have to, if it becomes an issue um, with you know heat getting in those in those wheels and 
causing that kind of a problem, then I might have to actually splurge and get a set of welds, I guess. That, that might happen, or so reach out to VMS and see if they will do a 5x100 and a 13, because I don't think they offer one, or I don't see it on their website, and they have a couple wheels that I like, but I just I would just have to ask them if they could do like a different barrel size, and if they could, that'd be really cool. So I didn't get a time to do anything with the staging brake yet. I'll do that eventually. Um, so like I said, the uh, yellow ones didn't want to fit with the other wheels. I'm not going to bother putting them on. I'll just wait to try and drive the car until I get these back. So what I'll do is we'll keep moving forward with the interior tomorrow after work. Because tomorrow morning we're going to run to town, or we're going to run into town. We're going to pick up the spindles for this car and then uh, drop all these other parts off. And then when we get back, um, I'll probably just punch right into work. And then uh, when I punch out, I'm going to run over and try and get the bearings and everything put together, the hubs and everything put together in the spindle for the blue car. And then if I can get that done, then I can come over here, slip those in the suspension real quick, get that kind of eyeballed and set up and ready to go. And then I can come back over to this car and start getting the cluster and the gauges mounted. And once that stuff's ready to go, then I can try and uh, disable the fuel and ignition, crank it over, get some oil pressure. And then once we got good oil pressure, and I know that we got good oil flowing to the turbo, then I can try and hook everything back up. We'll put some fuel to it and fire it up. So um, I still got to fix that fuel leak though. So I got to check that out and see if it is missing the O-ring or if the O-ring's damaged. I do have some dash 10 fitting. So luckily enough, I do have O-rings for that if I need it. Um, I'm hoping that's all it is, but uh, I'll get that taken care of. I do have to trim a little bit more metal. I want to clear this line a little bit here to get that out. I did put a P-clamp on that fuel line to kind of suck it away from the catch can. That got this line up and away from that. So I mean, it would, it's honestly, I'm, I gotta push a lot to even get it to go down and touch that. So I'm not worried about that rubbing anymore, to be honest with you. So I just gotta knock this corner off here, get that to clear a little better. And then what I might end up doing before I try and actually fire the car is if I gotta drain the fuel to fix this fuel leak, I might just pull the cell and then run over to Federoff's and see if he can weld down a tab for me. That way I can get the cell mounted at the top. And then we can get this thing permanently in here and then um, get, it up, get it all back together and see if we can fire it up. So in the meantime, I don't have to have fuel to try and, and crank it up and get oil pressure. So if I can get everything else hooked up, get it ready to go and have oil pressure, then as soon as we got everything back together for the cell, I can try and actually start the car. And then now with the change of plans because of the brake fitment issue, uh, not being able to just stuff the red ones on the car and drive with them. I do have the right seals, the pistons are over here, so we're ready to go. So as soon as I get those back together, I can put them on the car, get everything bled out. In the meantime, I can get the staging brake stuff figured out. Um, I also have the front rebuild kit for the uh, blue car here. Once I get those back, then I'll really worry about trying to get that brake line made. We'll get the hose mounted in the car, get this guy put back together, and then we'll be done with the chassis at that point. And then we'll just have to worry about getting the engine apart, get the cylinder head ported from this motor, and then put it back on that one. And then I also have a clutch disc over here. Now this one was in my blue car when we broke the input shaft. It's got a lot of meat on it though. I think a brand new disc is like eight millimeters. And the smallest I seen this one was like 7.83 or something like that. And the thickest pad was like 7.87. So I mean, it's almost new. But um, I'm gonna try and straighten these pieces of metal out here so they don't drag on a flywheel at all. And then I'm gonna clean up the edge of this friction material. I'm gonna put this guy back in and I think we're gonna ride with it. I think it'll be okay. It's just a little damage to one of the bucks. I mean, it's it's a very, very minor part. So if it did cause like an imbalance issue or something like that, then I can just buy a disc and throw it in the car. But I'm still gonna put it together and see if we can get everything ready to go with that disc. And then um, and then see if we can start driving that car. I mean, it, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to both of these things. I mean, this thing's gonna be insanely light and not make as much and not make as much power as this one when this one's really ready to go but this one will be faster um this one right now with the issue that we ran into with that gear set like we talked about a few videos ago if you're new and checking into the channel with one of my newest videos here with the power that that one was going to make um we did have a billet input shaft and everything that i was going to use in the car and then we took the gear set apart found out that there's a lot of pitting in first and second gear so i'm just going to put a stock gear set back in the car we're not going to put the nitrous on it yet until I put the billet input shaft in this car, we're probably going to turn it up a little bit on pump gas and see what we can squeeze out of it. We're definitely going to start making progress with this one, like I said, because of the brake situation with this car. So uh, we got all the parts. We're going to start making a lot of moves with it. So I am going to order the paint, and Matt's going to come over and give me a hand with that. Uh, we do have to schedule that, so I'm going to make the I'm going to place the order, see what it's got for expected shipping, 
and then we'll try and plan something according to that. So we're definitely gonna wrap this one up for the night, guys. It is getting to be really late. It's like two o'clock in the morning. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get inside, get washed up, and then we're gonna wake up and get these parts to powder. But we will see you guys tomorrow when we get back out here. So. Uh, definitely check out our Facebook, check out our Instagram, stay up to date with what we're doing here. You guys have yourself a good one. Stay safe, stay clean, and we'll see you at the track. Thanks.